Greetings, Neville. My good brother. Uh, this is a response um, to your question. How can we have unity amongst our, amongst our people if we as individuals are unwilling to face up to things that are going on in our community and face up to the way we view ourselves as people in the Western world? Well, I'd like to start off by saying that it's all about behavior. Okay? And behavior is basically nothing but saying and doing. Or not saying and doing. That's what it's all about. Saying and doing or not saying and doing. Behavior. Now, what formulates our behavior? What is it that makes us behave a certain way? Thoughts. Our thoughts. The way we think is what makes us behave um, in a way that we say and do things or don't say and do things that uh, get us into trouble or keep us from being unified. What formulates our thoughts? Words. Words formulates our thoughts. <clears throat> now, based on what we know about words, there's two things that words can do. Words can confuse or they can empower. Words. They can confuse or they can empower. Okay? How do words confuse? Words confuse when they are used to deceive you. That is deception. When someone uses words to deceive you, we call it deception, right? How can words be used to empower? Words can be used to empower when they reveal truth. Okay. <clears throat> so when words reveal truth, they uh, enlighten you or empower you. And when words confuse, basically they uh, <laughs> they make you stupid. They make you confused when, when, whenever they uh, are used in, in a way to, uh, to deceive you. Okay? Now, <clears throat> how we behave is based on the words that we use to think with. Right? I said that. Now, how we behave is also habit form. Okay? So, words that we think with words that we think with now if the words that we're thinking with are, are words that confuse us um, we, we have a problem 
if words that we're thinking with empower us, uh, <clears throat> then basically it, you know, it's it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If they empower us. They they empower us. If they if the words reveal the truth, then they empower us. Is is basically what I'm trying to say. I know I said that earlier, um, but you know I'm trying. I'm kind of rushed here because I got to do this stupid quick capture thing. Um, so uh, please bear with me. Um, but okay. So um, when 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 we have these words that we think with, right? And 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 these words that we think with formulate our behavior. Our behaviors um, be how, be become habits. How we behave becomes habits. Okay, and um, our offspring pick up how we behave. Basically, the way they behave is based on the habits that are picked up from us. Okay, offspring. Learn from us. Okay? We learned from our ancestors. What did we learn? We learned a behavior. We learned a way of saying and doing things or not saying and doing things that could keep us apart or keep us at keep us ununified. Our ancestors were forced to behave as subjects of a system that dominated and subjugated them. That system is called the system of racism, white supremacy. Why do we call it the system of racism, white supremacy? Because the word racism has developed so many meanings that this word confuses us as to what racism really is. As to what racism really is. It confuses us. Everybody, they hear racism say, oh, there's all these many different forms of racism. Three, there's all these different types. It's, it's homosexuals, it's, it's, it's uh, Filipinos, it's Mexicans, it's, uh, it's, les it's all these different kinds. It's male against me. All of this stuff they call racism. And it confuses us. Somebody applied all of these different meanings to it in order to confuse us. Some of us decided to take it upon ourselves and add white supremacy to it. See, now it helps you see what you're looking at. This reveals truth. If we say racism and we add the words white supremacy to it, now we're using words to empower because this helps us see what we're looking at. So, our ancestors were su was dominated and subjugated by racism, white supremacy. A system of racism, white supremacy. Such behaviors that they inherited. Okay, I, I wanted to revisit uh, 
racism real quick um, before I move on because I think it's a good example of what I was talking about when I say um, how words uh, can confuse uh, because you know basically uh, racism has a lot of different meanings these days okay uh, uh, racism means uh, hating uh, homosexuals uh, which is uh, this is another confusing word in a, in a whole nother video uh, but anyway hating homosexuals um, hating uh, 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 religious religious beliefs um uh, I've heard uh, some animal rights activist people say that you you uh, uh, if 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 you're not for animal rights, um, then then you're hating animals, and you are a racist. Um, um, hating uh, males or females. Uh, they want to say that you're racist. I mean, all of these different kind of things. Uh, they want to, first of all, they want to just conf confine it to hate. They don't want you to realize that there's other stuff that's going on with that. But, I mean, uh, nationality. You know, so called nationality is, is, uh, supposed to be racism okay um, all of these terms that have been applied to racism all of the different meanings that have been applied to racism make racism by itself a word that confuses people especially black people okay so, we have to add, when we add the words white supremacy, now we're talking about a specific racism. We're talking about a functional racism. Functional mean that it affects us at all times in all places and in all areas of activity including economics education entertainment labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Okay? Racism, white supremacy affects us in that. Nothing else. Alright? It's a whole other video also, but I just wanted to uh, interject that to show you what I'm talking about when I'm saying words. Okay? And the meaning of words. This is a confusing word. It has a lot of meanings to it. Until we add these two words to it, we add these two words to it, we're only talking about one. Just one. That's all we're talking about. Now, that specific system of racism, white supremacy, okay? Again, I said before, I think, um, it forced our ancestors to be subjects to it, all right? And the process of forcing our ancestors to be subjects to it means what? Their behaviors had to be changed. A, a free person doesn't have the same types of behavior as a slave. Free people uh, uh, think, say, and do things differently than an oppressed person does. Okay? They do that. And we're talking about a half a century. I mean, uh, um, 
not even half a century. We're talking about five, maybe six centuries, okay, of oppression. Nothing but people, our ancestors. Practicing or saying and doing what oppressed people say and do. Hope my writing is legible. So we're talking about saying and doing what oppressed people say and do. All right? Behavior. This behavior, of course, is learned or was learned by their offspring. They produced offspring. We're talking about a 600 year period, maybe longer, all over the planet where non-white people have been practicing a behavior, an oppressed behavior of saying and doing things. Passing it down from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation all the way on down up into today. Us. Present time. Right? Saying and doing. That's what it comes down to. Now, what are those behaviors? Many of us have, have seen these behaviors in each other and we've dubbed them the slave mentality or the Willie Lynch syndrome. I can't go into the whole detail. If you don't have the Willie Lynch letter, go out and buy it. Neville, I know you have it because I, I sent it to you. But other folks out there, you know, um, Go out and get it, you know, Amazon.com, your local black bookstore, what have you. The Willie Lynch letter. Now, it may, some people are saying that it might not be a true, Willie Lynch was not real or something. Well, that's fine. So what? The book itself talks, is, is, gives an accurate description of the type of behaviors that you see amongst our people. The stuff that keeps us disunified. Such behaviors as light against dark, dark against light, uh, uh, male against female, female against male, old against young, young against old, those types of behaviors. Okay? Um, those behaviors lead to, um, but are not limited to, self-hate, fear, powerlessness, envy, jealousy, inferiority, arrogance, ignorance, and many other, other um, um, behaviors that you're not going to discover within yourself unless you do a self-study uh, or, or uh, self man I'm trying to do this fast because of this dang quick capture thing self-analysis analysis okay alright if, if, if you understand that you know Sorry for my sloppy writing. But a self-analysis has to be done. Okay? Um, now, let's just say that we've done the self-analysis. We've, we've uh, you know, found out what it was that was wrong with us and corrected all of that. We still have another problem that exists after that. Racist man... And racist woman. We still have them. See, we have to understand that we are at war. Racist man and racist woman do not want us to be unified because they believe that our unity will stop them from existing. That's what they believe. So I'll, I'll say more in the next video. But we are at war.
Okay, so with this war going on, this war that is against us, which is uh, basically a war against non-white people, um, a war that is maintained and refined by racist man and racist woman. Let me just read a little bit to you about racist man and racist woman from the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. Racist man and racist woman, white supremacists, are the master subversive elements of the known universe. Because of their tremendous energy and great ability combined with their devotion to unjust and incorrect objectives, they have become the master promoters of falsehood, non-justice, and incorrectness. They are collectively the greatest enemies and the most skilled opposers to the production of peace among the people of the known universe. Mace, racist man and racist woman are the direct and or indirect functional cause of all widespread and long-lasting malice and confusion and all hunger and envy among all of the people of the known universe. As long as white supremacy racism exists, it is extremely important for all victims of racism, non-white people, to remember at all times that racist man and racist woman do not, at any time, willfully and deliberately do or say anything in any area of activity that does not directly or indirectly help to establish, maintain, expand, and or refine the practice of racism white supremacy. It is extremely important for victims of racism to remember that everything, repeat everything, that a racist white supremacist says or does that is willful and deliberate is intended to unjustly subjugate, dislocate, deceive, deny, deprive, destroy, and or retard one or more persons classified as non-white. It is correct to know, understand, and remember that as long as white supremacy exists, every person classified as white should be suspected of being a racist white supremacist. The only exceptions should be those white persons who are infantile, senile, and or acutely helpless because of mental or physical disabilities. It is correct to know, understand, and remember that the basic tools and or weapons of a racist man or racist woman are deceit, indirect violence, and or direct violence. A racist man or a racist woman will at all times seek to deceive his or her victims, non-white persons, and or he or she will seek to do violence to them directly. The deceit and direct violence usually takes many different forms and affects and dominates every area of activity of the violated. Racist man and racist woman are the masters of deceits and the masters of direct violence. Now, that being said, our unity equals peace to us. Okay? It equals peace to us. Imagine if every non-white person on the planet worked or thought, spoke and acted in a way that promoted our unity, that made us unified and we had peace. Okay? Nine-tenths of the earth whatever, earth, nine-tenths of the world, nine-tenths of the population of the people on the planet, nine-tenths of the world population are non-white people.
nine tenths. The other ninth is white people. Now, following the logic tells us that it is impossible for all white people to be racist, white supremacists. Just doesn't work. It's not logical for us to say that every white person is a racist, white supremacist. However, every racist, white supremacist is a white person. Once you start to think that, you will start to see what we are actually looking at here. You will start to see the system of racism, white supremacy, how it works, and what it is. Okay? To the racist, white supremacists, our unity is a weapon of mass destruction. WMD. Why? Because if if the nine tenths of the white people, the nine tenths of the population, if these white people had sex with one tenth of the non white population, there would be no more white people. White people would be non-white people. If if we did that, that that would mean that that uh, nine ninths of the planet would be non-white people, right? Why? You all know why. Everybody on this planet knows the reason why. But we continue to avoid the truth. We just don't like to face the truth for some reason or or maybe that much attention is not placed on it so we don't look at it as being a significant thing. Okay? But people classified as white um, have a recessive Um, genes when it comes when it comes uh, when it comes to melanin okay they have recessive genes we we know this how Here's my melon. This means that I have a dominant melanin. I have, I'm, my 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 the melanin um, in my skin is is a dominant gene. It's not recessive. The lighter a person is, the more recessive the the melanin is. But if I had uh, if I produce offspring with a white woman my offspring are going to come out with a more dominant gene than their mother why because my melanin or the melanin in my skin is dominant so so white plus non-white equals non-white okay racist man, racist man and racist woman know this they know they also know that white plus white equals white follow what I'm saying so far I hope we are so <clears throat> keeping that in mind okay I know 
I'm long winded. Um, a lot of videos. I hope you understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about dominant and recessive. Uh, by no means am I saying that a dominant skin color makes me superior to uh, white people uh, because it does not. Um, I do not believe that there is anything, any kind of physical feature um, uh, of, of the body, of, of the mi mind that makes uh, a person more superior than another. I don't believe in the concept of race. I, I'm of a non-race. I'm, I'm not of a race. Um, so I don't believe in the concept of 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 uh, you know believing that I'm superior to uh, to white people, and I don't believe in the concept of white people being superior to black people. For some of those who uh, you know have said I was a sellout or something like that or whatever, but anyway, okay, you know the skin is just that; it's just skin. Okay, and um, I suspect that for environmental reasons, that um, some of us uh, have, you know, darker skin complexions than others. But scientifically, um, they call that melanin. They said the dark, you know, the darker you are, the more dominant uh, the melanin is, um, and the lighter you are the more recessive the 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 um, melanin is okay um, and so um, at some time ago long time ago um, you know before any of us on this planet were ever breathing any of us that live here that are here breathing on the planet right now way before any of us ever were thought of with without having a whole lot of scientific information to go by with melanin and stuff okay the smartest and the most powerful white people on the planet at that time I suspect it was during the exploration period with Columbus and uh, Magellan and, and Francis Drake and all of those people when they were exploring the planet you know uh, Marco Polo and such when they were going around the planet that they, they discovered that the majority of the planet was made up of non-white people they also discovered that when they had sexual intercourse with non-white people the offspring they produced that were produced did not have the same type of skin that they had so they felt that hey you know we're gonna have to take some precautions here okay because if if we go ahead and we just continue to go at the rate that we're going right white plus non-white equals non-white if we continue to go at that rate and I'm talking about um, the white folks at that time the smart and powerful ones the white supremacists were probably thinking that eventually at some point in time there would be no white people because they would notice it white plus non-white equals non-white right they said okay well what kind of steps can we take to make sure that we continue to have white white plus white equals white so we say okay let's create a series of of ideas or concepts and thoughts um, speech uh, an action that could keep um, nine-tenths of the pop world population at white I mean uh, one one-ninth let's say nine-tenths nine, nine <laughs> that could keep one-tenth of the world population uh, non-white uh, white See, so all of this could be avoided if if my dang uh 
computer was working so I wouldn't have to do this quick capture with all these mistakes. But I hope you understand what I'm saying. You know, they said that and they said, okay, well, we're going to take these precautions. So there, those precautions was to subjugate and domi dominate the non-white people on the planet. I mean, that's the only way that they'd be able to keep white people around is to be able to control the activities of the non-white people. They'd have to control everything. They'd have to control the economics, the education, the entertainment, the labor, the law, the politics, the religion, sex, and war of the non-white people. They'd have to be able to control all of that to, to keep the non-white people at bay so that they could not overtake the white people. You, you follow what I'm saying here? I hope that, you know, you all follow what I'm saying. Um, because I'm trying to, you know, make it. Uh, sometimes I, you know, I, I spend a lot of time, well, what, what is this, five videos already? I don't know how many videos uh, trying to explain this and, you know, can't get it out sometimes or whatever. But, um, there is a section in the United Independent Compensatory Code uh, in the area of politics. It's called the, uh, where is it at? It's called the Causes of Racism. And it is on page, the Causes, the Causes, the Causes of Racism. Discussing the causes of racism starts on page 124. It's 124 and 125, and it breaks that down, okay? Um, because the 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 racist uh, white supremacists they want to keep white people on the planet. I mean, haven't haven't you all ever wondered why um, it's so important to know what the infant mortality rate is? Of, of a country? Why is it even important to know the population of a, com of a country? I mean, if you think about that, the counting of all of the people, the, the systematically uh, uh, categorizing of, of people, systematic categorizing of people, you know, uh, black people, brown people, yellow people, red people, what is that for? It began with these people, the racist white supremacists, thinking of ways to keep white. Thinking of ways to keep white, to keep a white population on the planet. <clears throat> it's called the prevention of white genetic annihilation annihilation that's what it is it's the prevention of white genetic annihilation. The racist white supremacists sum it up in uh, 14 words. They call it the 14 words. And this is what the unsophisticated racists do. Okay, I um I I, I tend to believe that the most smart and powerful uh, racists wouldn't even want this information to be out. The 14 words, uh, the 14 words is, says that um, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. Okay? I mean, what does that mean? A future for white children. That, that means that they want white children to be in the future. They want to. They want to secure the existence of their people. 
securing the existence of their people means that certain steps have to be taken. Okay, that means that set certain steps have to be taken to secure the existence. Okay, that if no steps had to be taken, or if if uh, they wanted to secure, did not want to secure the existence, or if it had no significance, there would not be a need to secure the existence. If if uh, white people didn't realize that they have uh, this um, this recessive gene, okay. So, I mean, if if nine tenths of the of, of, of the planet, you know, uh, is is non-white, and one tenth is white. Um, in order to in order to secure that existence, in order to secure that existence, they must control your people. Out of here, boy. No, they must control. Excuse me. Close the door. Secure that existence. They must. They must control the uh, the behavior. That, that's what I was trying to get at earlier of the the non-white of, of non-white people okay and and to make sure that it's secured those white people who wanted to secure that existence would have to teach a certain type of behavior to their offspring so that their offspring could make sure that that existence is secure. That behavior is is what I am calling racism white supremacy. It's a series of thoughts, speech, and actions that are do that are used to secure the existence of white people. America, America. So, um, with keeping keeping that in mind and understanding that we're fighting a battle on both fronts the battle against racist man and racist woman and the battle within ourselves uh... we're battling behaviors okay um... and i say that that battle starts with with the words that we use for for the thoughts that we have because um thoughts are uh, basically thoughts are kind of like things okay they can be passed on from one person to the next and so if if i have a negative thought if i if 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 i if i say if if my thought if i have a thought and i say black males are lazy. If I have that thought and then and then and then pass this on to someone else 
if, if I pass this thought on to uh, say my child I, I, I can't I, I, I say it to the offspring or um, I say it to my my friends uh, or, or I say it to people who you know they value what I say black males are lazy right four words that is a thought that I thought and by somebody else taking these four words and believing them and passing them on now they have a thought so it's thoughts thoughts are things okay thoughts are things we have many thoughts in our heads that are things we have many many things or, or thoughts that have been passed on to us um, you know uh, black people um, can't get along black people can't get along okay this is a thought that uh, I would say many of us have. M many of us possess this thought. We carry this thought around with us all the time. We know it. We know black people can't get along, right? So now, if we have th this thought that black people can't get along, and yet we try to have unity we can't have unity if we have this thought I, I'm myself if, if I'm if I'm looking at you I'm another black person and I know black people can't get along and you being the black person that you are and you say that black people can't get along but you're looking at me and I'm looking at you um, in our relationship that we have with each other, if we if we relate to each other on you know many different levels, we are not going to have the amount of trust that would be needed for us to be unity, to for us to have unity. Because in my mind, saying black people don't get along, or perhaps I've been done wrong. I've you know so so many I've I've, I've heard this saying. I've had this thought. And then um, a black person uh, does me uh, in, in, in a, you know, mistreats me. And so I say, oh, well, black people can't get along. Right? Okay. So we, I mean, these thoughts, this, this thought is ingrained in us. Okay. This is ingrained in us. This, you, you, can, you can go anywhere on the planet and find black people who, who, who fit this sentence. I mean, anywhere. I mean, huge amounts of black people who fit this sentence. Countries. Tribes. Gangs. Husband and wife. Sister and brother. Light skin and dark skin. Old and young. Male, female. You can find it. We, we, we make this statement true. So the way to counter that is, right, the United Independent Compensatory Code comes up with minimize the conflict. Minimize the conflict. So it, it's ingrained in our mind. This this is something that came this this is this is a racist thought. This right here is a racist thought that is used to to keep us um, against each other. Minimize the conflict is counter racist thought
So what did it do? It says we it, it says okay minimize the conflict counter racist thought okay no contact no conflict unless it's constructive in the promotion of justice or in guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most help that right there would be unity in of itself so so let's let's think about this i mean i i, I you know sum it up look so in my mind i'm saying black people can't get along a lot of us some of us we say niggers can't get along okay i don't know if they use the word over there in the uk or not but over here it's used a lot okay and it's ingrained in our head so it's in my head and it's already there um and no matter how much I try to say it's it's not true, I always meet a black person who's going to make me believe that it's true. I, because I get mistreated by them and I say, okay, black people can't get along. Racist thought passed on to us. But if I say, okay, I know black people can't get along. Black people can't get along. Because we can't get along let me practice minimizing the conflict let me make sure that since i know that i can't get along with black with black people and i know that other black people can't get along with me let me minimize the conflict between them by having no con no contact with them no contact means no conflict huh and all i have to do is in the promotion of unity I just add these this other thing no contact with another black person or another non-white person because let me tell you this this goes not just black people think this I, I have met so-called Mexicans or brown people who, who say the same thing believe it or not I have met yellow people I've met Chinese people who have said this very same thing not about black people but about themselves this is something <clears throat> that circulates in the minds of non-white people all over the planet in relation to their own people it's not just us this is how I know that it's racist thought okay so anyway so no contact with any non-white people unless it's constructive in the promotion of justice or in guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most help. That's unity right there. That's it. We don't have no contact until something happens. Somebody needs some help. Everybody unifies, comes together. We're helping the person who needs the most help. Hey, all right, see y'all later. Bye. Right, we go. We we don't hang around and 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 uh spend enough time with each other uh, to wait um, for uh, a fight to break out or an argument or disagreement we just don't do it okay because all of us got so much self-hate uh, you know the other stuff you said you were Eric all these different kind of things we got flowing through our minds that comes from slavery okay and when we recognize the truth and say, hey, you know what, these things are here. We got some serious mental issues, problems, okay? And, and, and I want to get along with black people. I want to get along with them. But black people don't get along. So let me just go ahead and just say, I'm going to limit my contact with them. All of them. All of them. Right now, this thing we got going on YouTube, on the internet, where we can all talk to each other and everything, it's cool. Because we don't really have any contact. You know what I mean? We can get on, we can say what we got to say, the other one can say what they got to say, and it's not even, it can't even get into an argument, really. Because one person says what they say in the video, the other person says what the other person says. The they just go back and forth, but there's no, no kind of cutting each other off, no kind of, uh, 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 you know, 
if, if, if the other person wants to do some name calling or gossiping or whatever, you're on video. So, you know what I mean? But we, we would like to follow, you know, of, of course, along the lines of minimizing the conflict are the 10 stops. But, you know, that's a different story. I think I got into the 10 stops before. Um, so, you know, basically, you said, how can we have unity amongst our people if we as individuals are unwilling to face up to the things that are going on in our community and face up to the way we view ourselves as people in the Western world? Okay, The way we view ourselves has to change. What we have to do is is view ourselves as individuals. That I mean that that that's you know in my opinion. View ourselves as individuals. who have something no no who have who have a major thing in common Okay? View ourselves as individuals who have a major thing in common with other non white individuals. Huh? View ourselves as individuals who have a major thing in common with other non-white individuals. What is that major thing? I'm pretty sure you all know what I'm going to say. Racism, white supremacy. That's the one major thing that we all have in common. See, I can't if if I meet uh, uh, a person that says that they are uh, Yoruba or Fulani or Igbo, if I meet them and we follow the regular training that we've received under the system, they will say that they're different from me because they're Fulani or Igbo or even because they're African. And I'll say I'm different from them because I'm African American and don't know what Igbo is, don't know Yoruba, don't know uh, 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 Fulani, don't know none of that. Can't speak the language. I don't know any of their customs or cultures. Don't know any of them. But they are mistreated on the basis of color, the same way I am same way I am no matter where I am where I'm from on the planet no matter whether my, my skin color is brown like this midnight black or, or high yellow yellow I'm still being mistreated and those people are still being mistreated by the people who choose to mistreat us on the basis of color. That's what we have in common. That's the only thing that matters. All of the everything else does not matter. It does not matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what tribe you come from. It doesn't matter what country you come from on this planet. You are subjugated and dominated by the racist white supremacists the same I the same as I am I know there's a lot of people out there would disagree with me Malcolm AP for one okay but <clears throat> some words that you said here 
you said um community see okay I know I know I'm wrapping it up real soon um but it's just that your your uh, your question made me think of a lot of things and I don't know you know it's been a while since I've produced any videos anyway so maybe this is a way to catch up uh anyway okay you would use the word uh community you said black community and so remember when I was talking about a couple of videos ago when I was talking about the words that we use um you know <sighs> many words uh, are used to deceive us um, and then you know other words are there to empower us okay see to me black community community I see two words in community I see common and unity okay if if we recognize that we have uh, uh, that we are dominated and subjugated by racism white supremacy and we recognize that that's what we have in common then we can be unified we can have unity um, because we'll constantly we'll, we'll understand that that what's necessary to have unity um, is for us to is to uh, use counter racism compensatory code on ourselves and also use counter racism, counter racism compensatory code against the racists. Um, you know, so we're fighting on both fronts, and we understand. You know, the, the the main thing that we have in common from racism, white supremacy, is the problems that we have. You know, I mean, even though you're in Britain and and I'm over here, uh, you and I both we we speaking uh, we speaking and thinking English. Uh, you know, which we know is not our language. That is a result of racism, white supremacy. I mean, the bottom line is, if the racists want to control us, I mean, instead of them trying to understand what our language is or what our language was, they forced us to speak their language. So, since we are speaking with their language, we're thinking, speaking, uh, and and acting with their words, we have to use their words to empower us. And it's no need. I mean, I'll learn Swahili. Me learning Swahili is good. Um, if I when I go to uh, a Swahili speaking country and I want to speak Swahili uh, with someone um, in the bush who may not speak English. Um, but the majority of the people in all of the countries that speak Swahili as a language, they speak English because they were subjugated and dominated or are subjugated and dominated by racism, white supremacists just like we are. So taking their language, two words, common and unity. So in reality, there is no black community because we're not working with what we have in common to create unity. We're not doing that. So I don't even use the word black community. I use the word collective. Why? Because collective is the truth. Collective means that we're just a group of people. We are we are a, a, a group of people who have been uh, placed together as a whole. Um, so we are the black collective. Now, as long as I say that, as long as I know that we're the black collective, it stays on my mind to focus on getting unity or making us into a community. It stays on my mind. I'm not thinking that we're already a community. We're already somebody that, that has, you know, everything we need and we got it together. Because we're not. We're not a common unity. 
the racist white supremacists are. They are. The racist white supremacists are a common unity. They have formed a common unity a long time ago. In order, in, in order to practice racism, white supremacy against us. They have done that. But us? No. We don't have a common unity. We're just a black collective. And, and, and that helps me. Now, I, you, know, um, you know, of course, many of us, we, we may have different, we, we got different understandings or, you know, different ways of doing things. But that's how, that's how words work for me. Okay. Another word, a group of words that are empowering to me, um, because I was having a discussion with someone about this the other day, um, is uh, victim, or we'll just say victim for now. Okay, a victim. A whole lot of black people just don't like this word. They don't like it. They say. Because they say a victim is weak, uh, a victim is uh, powerless um, to do anything. A victim is, you know, uh, a victim. They just don't like this word. Don't call us victims. This this one uh, black person I speak to said, "Don't call us victims. Uh, we we should say we should call ourselves survivors." Okay. Now, survivors of what? We're, we're still in it. <laughs> See, if if I'm in a flood, right, the people who, who, who survived Katrina, they were called flood victims. They called them flood victims because they survived the flood. They survived the hurricane. You understand what I'm saying? Or hurricane victims. I mean, uh, flood survivors or, or, or survivors of the hurricane or survivors of the flood. Okay, but during the process of the hurricane, they were hurricane victims. The the, the hurricane was going on, the, the, the flood was going on, they were victims. Now now after it was all over, they could give themselves the status of survivor. They could say, Oh, I survived Hurricane Katrina because Hurricane Katrina ended. You understand? They survived the hurricane. Or they can say, I, I'm a, I survived the earthquake. I survived the flood. Okay? However, racism, white supremacy, is still here. In my opinion. It still dominates us and subjugates us. Okay? So while it's still here and I'm still being dominated and subjugated, victim of racism. See? Th this this adds to me, this adds power to this word, to me. It empowers me because it reminds me of what I am and who I am and why I am it. I can't say I'm a survivor of racism. This is what I would call myself once we've defeated racism, which is a system of injustice, once we've replaced racism with justice, once this world is a world of justice, then I can say I'm a survivor of racism. Still going on. But people say, oh, don't call yourself a victim of racism. But it's empowering because it helps you recognize, it helps me recognize who I am. See, if I was fat, if I was overweight, and I wanted to be, if I wanted to lose weight, I have to first recognize that I'm overweight first. If, if I'm a drinker, if I drink a whole lot, or if I'm a drug addict, I have to first recognize that I'm a drug addict, or that I'm an alcoholic, before I can change my condition. If I run around saying that um, I'm a king, I'm I'm a king. If, if I if I say hey I'm a king, um, or uh, 
queen. Well, we you know we don't want to say I'm a queen, but you know for the females. But I, I'm, I'm a king. King of. Okay, I'm a king. King of what? What am I the king of? Okay, I can say um, if if I research history and and I and I run across the uh, the black people uh, who were in civilization who who were kings and who were queens um, and know that and say well my ancestors were kings okay they were the kings my ancestors were the kings I'm not a king at the same time that those ancestors were kings these these kings our ancestors who were kings had subjects their subjects were black too they had blacksmiths uh, uh, carpenters masons they, they had all kinds of subjects D different people doing day-to-day -day things that help run the kingdom how effective does the word king help me today by calling myself a king it does nothing but make me be perhaps a little arrogant maybe I can walk around and stick my chest out a little bit and yeah, I'm a king. Huh? Let's be real. How many kings do you know pay rent? Kings don't pay rent. A, a, a king, a king doesn't pay a mortgage. When you think of a king, a king has subjects. Who are my subjects? I don't have any subjects. And a king has land. King, a king has lots of land. King has a castle. A big castle. Huge thing. Anybody want to know what a king looks like under the system of racism, white supremacy? Google Buckingham Palace. Google Buckingham Palace. Google the king of Monaco. Monaco. Look at that king. Under the system of racism and white supremacy. You'll see what a king is. I'm no king. This doesn't work for me. Same goes for a queen. It doesn't work. It's not constructive. But when we say, when I say victim of racism, this helps me stay focused. Yes, I'm a victim of racism. Yes, I'm weak. I'm pitiful. I'm, I'm all of the things that's, that's keeping me and my people from doing what is necessary for us to have unity. I'm arrogant. I have self-hate. And this is honesty, okay? I'm, I'm finally coming to the reality of the situation and being honest with me. Too many of our people will not be dishonest with themselves. We would rather feel this way and, 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 and put some kind of false confidence over it to clean it up. Some of that uh, whatever my mind can conceive or believe it can achieve stuff. Okay? That works in some, in some, in some ways. 
but it doesn't work in all ways. But I'm starting to realize we have to have a combination of it. That, that whatever my mind can conceive or believe stuff comes from this book right here. Think and Grow Rich. Okay? That's where it comes from. Positive affirmation, positive thinking. Okay? That's fine. Okay? But you must, you got to start somewhere. Before you can say, um, I want to be, I want to project myself over here. I, I want to uh, be a king. You just can't say, I'm a king, and then um, walk around telling everybody you're a king, and all of a sudden, uh, you're going to be a king. It doesn't work that way. We can't say that we are free. Run around saying that we are free people. And that we are unified people when when we act we actually are not. That's not that's not what's going to do it. That's not going to cut it. We can't run, we can run around and say we built the pyramids all day long. But right now, if any any one of us wanted to go to Egypt and take back the pyramids, see if we don't have some trouble. So it starts with this victim of racism. So now, now that I recognize I'm a victim of racism, I'm, I'm starting to think of how not to be a victim. Now I'm trying to, I'm trying to find ways to think, speak, and act. So I'm not a victim of racism anymore. But I'm going to continue to be one until this, the system of racism, white supremacy, is eliminated. That's the only way. For, for, for me. This works for me. It works far better for me than saying I'm an African. I know. See, see, I'm I'm not somebody who's who um denied this. I spent the majority of my existence from from the day I was born. And and I'm 39 years old. I spent the majority of my existence from the day I was born calling myself an African, saying this is what I am. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me anymore. I called myself black. You know, I used to have a shirt. They used to say, uh, Negro colored. Um, black African okay then we went to the, the, just the, the African part was a brief period it was just a few of us calling us that when when at the time when I was calling myself African and I was telling other black folks they was African, we'd get into a fight on the, on the schoolyard. Me telling other black folks that they was African. I ain't no African booty scratcher. That, that's what they would say. Africans swing around in trees. Africans live in mud huts. Africans don't wear clothes. That's the kind of stuff they used to say. I, I'd already known our history and I'd already known the truth. And I was telling them, no, Africans don't swing swing around in trees. Africans don't live in a, 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 a mud hut the way you think it is. They they use mud to make bricks. And, they, and they, they build their homes from bricks that are made of mud. But it's not a mud hut. I used to tell them that kind of stuff. Africans don't run around naked. I, I used to tell them that kind of stuff. They fight all the time. They didn't believe me though. Then one day all of a sudden, when the white man starts calling us Africans, then black people start calling themselves Africans. 
It worked with that. It worked that way with all of these. They told us we were Negroes. We followed that. They told us we were colored. We followed that. They, <clears throat> they told us we were black. We followed that. Briefly, we were African. Then it skipped on over. African American. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and the thing about it is, 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 it's been made to look as though we're the ones that chose these names. Um, at least starting from this period. Right here. Okay? The Negro and, color, ne uh, Negro and black mean the same thing. Okay? Um, my thing is, 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 is that uh, all of this changing of, 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 of names and, and how, you know, at different points in time throughout our history, uh, we've, we've um, accepted these names or, or rejected these names. Either way, it demonstrates that there's something wrong here. It demonstrates that there's something wrong mentally going on here. Alright? For a people to constantly go from Negro to colored, uh, uh, black, African, and African American. Some of us, some of us call ourselves, uh, um, Hebrew Israelites. Or Israelites. Some of us call ourselves Moors. Okay? Uh, some of us call ourselves uh, New Waubian. Some of us call ourselves Asiatic. Asiatic. A uh, black man. We 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 go through all of these changes. Now now <clears throat> some of us who are calling ourselves New Iubians, um, and a New Iubian that's if you if you're watching any of 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 these videos, maybe you can contact me and let me know. But if I remember correctly from the new Waubians that I have spoken to, they say that all of us are new Waubians. Uh, Hebrew Israelites uh, say that all of us are Hebrew Israelites. And Moors say that all of us are Moors. Um, now I know because I was in the Nation of Islam <clears throat> for 10 years, and the Nation of Islam. Uh, said the Asiatic black man. That's what we were. We the Asiatic black man. Uh, you know, uh, they'd ask us a question. Uh, it was a question and answer thing. You know, who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. That that's uh, the kind of thing that we that we were taught there. Okay. Um, so uh, all of this stuff, all of these names that we call each other or call ourselves all of this means that we have psychological issues okay there is something mentally did I spell mentally I think mentally is spelled with one Y yeah, I used to be a fantastic speller man but as I got older I, I, I have no I don't know but I mean uh, words are just uh, sounds plus symbols anyway so whatever I said mentally mentally okay whatever so mentally we, we, we have we got mental issues we have psychological issues and this means all of this means if we have psychological issues and we're doing all this changing of, of names and everything to me, personally, it means we are victims of racism. Why? Because we wouldn't have this problem. If, if we were not victimized 
by racism, white supremacy. We would not have, we, we would not be debating or would not have uh, ever had to even uh, think about whether we wanted to be Negro, black, colored, African, or whatever. We, we, we wouldn't be thinking about that. But guess what? African is no better because Africa was named after the first white man who stepped foot on the continent. The, I think it's this Cipriano uh, Cipriano Afri Canus. Okay. <clears throat> we all hear about Hannibal. We know Hannibal. We liked Hannibal because Hannibal was a great general. Um, Hannibal marched uh, a huge army with elephants across across the uh, the Alps to to get to Rome. Well, Africanus is the white man that kicked Hannibal's ass. No, I'm serious. This is the general who trapped Hannibal. He chased Hannibal out of the Alps. Uh, I'm not out of the Alps, but away from Europe, across the Mediterranean, and back to Carthage, where Hannibal was. <laughs> and 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 he uh, got um, the the government of Carthage to to switch sides and 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 allow him to go and capture Hannibal. Um. You know, whole different story. But I'm just saying. You know, we have to think of something that's constructive in helping us see what we're actually looking at and dealing with here. Once we get to doing that, we can start working on the unity. As I was saying, with the minimizing the conflict and knowing who our enemy is. You know, um, um, another word I saw on here, race. This that's um that you you wrote that you mentioned in your question, and um, we have to be aware when I was talking about words, right? The racists have a whole lot of thoughts. That, that they that they use it traveling, okay? That tra I mean, they travel from person to person, like I was saying. Uh, I think I said in one of the other videos about things, but thoughts being things. Um, but you use the words Western world, this is racist code. What What's the other world that we think of? Whenever they're talking about nations, we, we hear the Western world, and then we hear about the third world. Right? These are racist codes. Racist codes for what? Non-white nations. Or people. And white people or nations the writings all messed up there but you understand what I'm saying these are racist codes other racist codes uh, I got a few seconds left but you know a uh, foreigner um, um, Illegal alien? Who 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 are these talk who are they talking about? We know automatically already. If we follow the logic, we know what they're talking about when they say foreigners and illegal aliens. They're only talking about non white people. That's it. 
Why? Why do they talk like that? Why do they use r racist codes for non-white people like that? Because it's a part of the refinement of racism white <clears throat> Okay, so um, basically uh, I mean that sums it up about that the refinement stage or the refinement of racism and white supremacy is um, you you can find more about that in the uh, video that I did called uh, the four stages of racism and white supremacy um, or you could you know uh, look it up in the United Independent Compensatory Code uh, which which is where I read it from um, it's a textbook workbook for thought speech and or action for victims of racism um, and it's by Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, he, he named it United. Uh, see, well, one one of the things about about uh, compensatory counter racist logic is it's it's kind of used like. Um, the best way I could I could I could think of is like um, Bruce Lee's way. He, Bruce Lee had the concept of of uh, to learn learn every martial arts that you can, learn everything that you possibly can about every type of fighting art or martial art that there is, and then look in it, look within it, and and take what you take out of it what's constructive for you and you know that is what works for you and what does not work for you don't use okay uh, the concept of you know compensatory counter racist logic kind of works that way um, because you, you study everything you study everything you can in this within the system of racism white supremacy and uh, you take out of it uh, what you what what's going to be constructive, uh, and when we say constructive, we mean constructive in destroying the system of racism, white supremacy. Okay, so uh, using the word united is constructive for us because it means that we all share the uh, objective. We're all united in in one objective, one ultimate objective, and that objective is replacing racism, white supremacy, with justice. Everyone who practices the counter racism code, that that is what we're united for. We're united in in doing that. Yet we are independent We're independent of each other in how we do it. I mean we don't there's no there's no leaders. There, there's no one within the compensatory or within within the the uh, the codified family. Uh, is what we like to call it. There's there's no one in the in the codified family or the counter racist family um, who can uh, tell another one of us what to do. We can only make suggestions. So we make suggestions to one another, and um, you know it's up to you to follow the suggestion or not. If the suggestion works for you, then it works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Okay? The only thing that the, the counter-racist logic says is that if you find a suggestion that you believe does not work in meeting this objective of replacing racism and white supremacy with justice, then 
you replace that suggestion with one that does. That, that, that's the way it works. Neely Fuller Jr., the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code, is not our leader. None of us are qualified to lead. None of us. We're not qualified. There is not one, in my opinion, not one non-white person on the planet that's qualified to lead. Uh, every last one of us um, gets told by some smart and powerful white people what to do. We get told what to do. And if we don't follow it, they have a power to back us, to, to back them up in case we decide we don't want to do what, what, is, what is told. Saddam Hussein is a, is a great example. The racists put him in power in Iraq. They put him in power. As soon as he started acting up and, 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 and thought that he was, was, uh, was, was in charge and started making changes that the racists didn't like, they took him out. Um, uh, the brother in Zimbabwe, Mugabe, the racist self put him in power. As soon as he, as soon as he started uh, standing up and 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 um, and and trying to uh, keep his word bond. For for the uh, the uh, veterans, the war veterans who fought because they were promised to get land. Many of them fought on the condition that they thought that they were going to be able to get a hold of some land. So as soon as he met that standard, and the the racists helped participate in that, they they all agreed that those veterans were going to get that land. As soon as Robert Mugabe tried to meet that standard, that promise, back up that promise, all of a sudden the whole country went to hell. They, they, they were given sanctions. Economic sanctions were placed on that country to force him out of power. Happened, same thing happened with Idi Amin. Same thing happened. Give me one black leader. One black so-called so-called black leader somewhere on the planet, anywhere on the planet. Just give me a non-white one anywhere on the planet. Pick a name and just give them to me, and I'll do the research and and show you that they they are there because the race has helped them get there. So okay, independent, compensatory. Okay. Following this code helps us compensate. It, it helps compensate us for that which we are lacking, well, that which we, we don't have. Okay? I mean, when you follow. So, so like, uh, for instance, the, the word system. Since I was eight or nine years old, I knew that the system was 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 controlled by some white folks you know at the time I thought you know I, I thought it was just just white people I didn't know that it was white people who chose to mistreat non-white people on the basis of color it's a few subversive white people it's not all white people there's just some subversive white people some who choose to mistreat us okay and they are the smart and powerful white people because they're running the system. We don't know who they are. You can't see them, but you can see their actions happening all over the world. You you can see it if if you just start following the logic. Start asking a lot of questions about a whole lot of stuff. So it compensates by saying by adding the words of racism white supremacy. That's how the the code helps us compensate for things. This helps us see what we're actually looking at. And it does that with a lot of words. A whole lot. So, anyway, that's the end of, of my response to you. Um, I hope that 
all of these videos have been constructive in uh, you know producing something that that'll be helpful in countering racism. All right, stay strong in the struggle.